The European football scene in 1984 was vastly different from today, reflecting the unique geopolitical climate of the era. The Berlin Wall still stood tall, and the Cold War loomed large, casting its shadow across the world. The Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc were yet to experience the transformative changes that would reshape maps in the years to come. UEFA, with only 33 members at the time, stuck to the format of the previous tournament. Two groups of four teams followed by two knockout rounds. However, Euro 1984 diverged from its predecessor, Euro 1980, held in Italy, which hindsight labels as a failure. Empty stadiums and rampant hooliganism, coupled with uninspiring football and few goals, left many disappointed. In the absence of football powerhouses like world champions Italy, England, and the Netherlands, who failed to qualify, all eyes were on Les Bleus. The anticipation was palpable as the tournament unfolded, especially with none of the home nations participating, leading the BBC to skip airing the matches, a decision that would later prove to be a mistake. Euro 1984, often considered one of the greatest international tournaments by avid football enthusiasts, marked a turning point. The absence of familiar faces and the fresh energy brought by emerging teams contributed to the tournament's success, proving that sometimes the unexpected can lead to remarkable outcomes in the world of football. Contrary to initial concerns about a drop in football quality due to notable absences, the stage was set for surprises. Spain and Portugal, stepping into the void left by some big names, emerged as unexpected contenders, challenging the might of West Germany. Unlike the lackluster performance of the host nation in Euro 1980, France ignited the imaginations of fans worldwide in Euro 1984. The stadiums buzzed with excitement, and getting tickets became a rare commodity as fans clamored to witness the exhilarating attacking football. In the midst of this football frenzy, Michel Platini stood out as a charismatic leader capable of leaving his mark on any game. His influence became a defining factor in the unfolding drama of Euro 1984, proving that the tournament was not just about the absence of big names, but also about the rise of unexpected heroes and thrilling performances. Gianni Agnelli, Juventus president, vividly captured the impact of acquiring Michel Platini with the words, we bought him for a morsel of bread and he put foie gras on top of it. Ahead of Euro 1984, Platini had already clinched his first league title, standing out in a division filled with household names. The tournament, taking place on Platini's home turf in France, was also significant as the birthplace of the competition, thanks to Henri Delaunay's efforts. France's journey to Euro 1984 came on the heels of a controversial World Cup semi-final elimination two years earlier against West Germany, remembered for Harold Schumacher's infamous tackle on Patrick Battiston. Despite the setback, Platini, who had battled injuries in the previous tournament, acknowledged his team's formidable display in 1982. In 1984, Platini was in his prime, boasting two of his eventual three Ballon d'Or titles. Reflecting on the tournament, he stated, In 1984, I wasn't injured, and I was able to perform at my peak. A great moment for French football and for French sport as a whole. Renowned English commentator John Motson was determined not to miss Euro 1984. He remarked, Until 1984, the European Championship had not been blessed with great football, emphasizing the tournament's evolution. The altered format in 1980 failed to impress due to a lack of attacking play and goals. Motson, like many, agreed that the quality in 1984 was different, largely credited to Michel Platini's heroics. The Frenchman achieved a remarkable feat by scoring in every game his team participated in, a rare accomplishment in football history. The opening match against Denmark served as a litmus test for the host nation's capabilities in Euro 1984. Denmark, equipped with star player Alan Simonsen, a former European Player of the Year, and a young Michael Laudrup, who had already eliminated England in the qualifiers, posed a formidable challenge. The Danes, far from pushovers, initially frustrated France, setting the stage for a compelling encounter. 
However, disaster struck in the second half when Simonson suffered a broken leg in a 50-50 challenge with Yvon Leroux. The unsettling sound of the injury, likened to a branch breaking in a tree, lingered in the memories of players and fans. Despite the setback, France prevailed with Michel Platini orchestrating a deflected winner. Platini's stellar performance continued throughout Euro 1984, making him the tournament's top scorer. What's even more remarkable is that he still holds the record for the most goals scored in a single European championship with nine goals. Despite Cristiano Ronaldo's recent pursuit, Platini's nine goals in one competition remain unmatched. This underlines the extraordinary achievements of Leroy. The quartet of Alain Gires, Jean Tigana, Louis Fernandez, and Michel Platini, collectively known as the Carré Magique, or the Magic Square, played a pivotal role in France's success. Dominating Group 1, they secured victories against Denmark, Belgium, and Yugoslavia. Denmark, despite Simonsen's injury and a second-place finish in the group, advanced to the knockout stages by overcoming Belgium in a tight match and defeating a disappointing Yugoslavia. The Carre Magique's cohesion and individual brilliance laid the foundation for France's triumphant journey through the group stage. In Euro 1984, despite the notable absentees, serious talent still graced the tournament. West Germany, a traditional powerhouse, secured their place after topping their qualifying group. However, doubts loomed over their status as an international football superpower. A goalless opener against Portugal triggered criticism, with many pointing out that despite their physical prowess, West Germany lacked the finesse needed for the competition's later stages. Rudy Voller's two goals against Romania in the second game temporarily silenced the critics. Yet Portugal and Spain's determined performances meant that their fate rested in their hands going into the final group game. Portugal secured a late 81-cent minute winner against Romania, marking their first appearance in the knockout round. In a miraculous twist, Spain left it even later. West Germany needed just a point to advance, and after Lobo Carrasco's penalty miss, it seemed they would sneak through. However, with seconds left, Antonio Maceda converted Juan Antonio Senor's cross, stunning fans across Europe. West Germany was out. The Germans faced soul-searching after an undoubtedly unsuccessful campaign. Swift action followed, with coach Jupp Derwall getting sacked and replaced by the iconic Franz Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer, known for his talismanic contributions to his country, stepped in to guide his team towards better days, marking the beginning of a new chapter for West German football. As France asserted their dominance in Group 1, entering the semi-final against Portugal, they were widely considered the easy favorites. What transpired, however, is etched in memory as one of the greatest international matches ever witnessed. Key figures like Fernando Chalana, Rui Jordão, and Nene had played pivotal roles in propelling Portugal to their first knockout stage appearance. But facing France, it seemed they had met their match. The unexpected hero emerged in the form of Jean-Francois Domergue, a makeshift left-back for France. He wasted no time in asserting his authority, smashing a free kick home within a quarter of the game. The fans at Marseille's velodrome erupted in joy, witnessing their hopes of a French march into the final taking shape. Yet, in football, missed opportunities can come back to haunt you. With every Manuel Bento save, the Portuguese grew in belief. Their breakthrough arrived through Chalana's precise cross from the left, expertly met by Jordão, leveling the score with just 15 minutes left. Manuel Bento's continued heroics frustrated the hosts, pushing the game into extra time. The unfolding drama had the spectators on the edge of their seats, setting the stage for a thrilling climax. The tension in the velodrome was palpable as the game progressed, and with each passing minute, the Portuguese side grew in belief. Their newfound confidence materialized in the 98th minute through another chalana Jordao combination. Chalana outsmarted a fatigued Domergue, delivering an intuitive ball that Jordao volleyed home, an exceptionally underrated goal. France found themselves on the brink of defeat, 
facing their home crowd. With only six minutes left, France threw everything into attack, leaving themselves vulnerable. Domergue, redeeming himself, scored a crucial toe poke just inside the box, eliciting collective sighs of relief from the velodrome. Penalties, the cruel decider, seemed inevitable for determining the finalist. However, the French had other plans. Even after equalizing, they remained resolute in their attacking efforts. The relentless Jean Tigana drove his side forward and managed to cut the ball back to the one man who couldn't miss, Michel Platini. The velodrome exploded in celebration, while the Portuguese side collapsed in disappointment. Michel Platini's goals cannot be denied, but Jean Tigana was for many equally important to France's success. Having overcome Denmark in another dramatic semi-final that saw Spain needing penalties to advance, they simply could not cope with Tigana's domineering final performance in midfield. In a piece for The Times, David Miller emphasized Tigana's significance, stating that one could easily argue he was the most pivotal figure in France's five victories, even considering Platini's flurry of usually superbly taken goals. Platini, despite enjoying a stroke of luck with his goal in the final, where his initially saved free kick spilled over the line, continued to be a driving force. The Spanish side struggled to recover from that point, especially as France went down to 10 men late in the game. The trophy slipped away from Spain, sealed by a second goal when Tigana set up Bruno Ballon in the dying moments. This victory marked France's first international trophy on home soil, and the manner in which they achieved it underscored Euro 1984 as a special tournament. Coach Michel Hidalgo encapsulated the sentiment, describing it as a triumph for attacking football after years of defensive attitudes. The tournament not only celebrated individual brilliance, but also highlighted the collective prowess of a French team that embraced an attacking ethos to claim glory.